Now, when that building was put there, if you drive by it now, you'll see an old sign that says Joy Community Building. And when that grant was written way back when, it was supposed to have a clinic for people to get medical services and a soup kitchen. And for a few years, that clinic did run until those running the soup kitchen saw it took a lot of work. So their idea was to sell off all the stuff and rent the space out for $100 a month. That area, since I've been there, I've seen the need of a clinic in that area. So on April, on April 13th, we are reopening the Joy Community Clinic. And it's going to be free of charge to people in need of medical services. And we actually got Viden Hospital to pay for a nurse practitioner. They'll be picking up her salary for the year. Wow. I have Tom Irons, the head of the ECU Medical. Uh, I've met Mr. Irons, okay. Dr. Irons. Dr. Irons. Yeah. He has signed on to be our medical director. Wow. He came in one day and I didn't know. And Okay, so you've met Tom. You see how he dresses, right? Shop dresser. Mm-hmm. So he came walking in a joy one day. He had on a, a hat, a vest, and a bow tie. And I says, hey, the guy from Jurassic Park is here. <laughs> <laughs> He, I had no idea who he was, and uh, he, oh, that's hilarious! You said that, <laughs> right? And and he's looking at me. I said, "Hey, what can I do for you?" He says, "Well, he smells." He goes, first off, I want whatever he's a serving." Yeah. And that day, I was making hot pastrami sandwiches on an onion roll. So I said, "All right, hold on." And he goes, uh, "Do you run the place?" I said, "Yeah." He goes, "Well, I'd like to talk to you." So I said, "Well, let me get us both a sandwich, and we'll sit down and we'll eat." And we sat down that day, and Karen, who's the vice chair of Joy, comes on, and she calls me aside, and she goes, you know who that is? I says, some little guy that likes pastrami. <laughs> and she said, that's Tom Irons, Dr. Irons. And I says, okay, cool. Who's that? <laughs> and she told me, and I was like, it just got real. Is it, He's the – he is the – He's the director of, isn't he the director of like the School of Medicine School or something? School of Medicine, yeah. Over like, at he's actually, he's the director. Yes. Yeah. And he he's like the top doc in Eastern North Carolina. For those of you who don't know um, uh, much about ECU, because I, I feel like it's an Eastern North Carolina thing. Mm-hmm. And for people who aren't, who are listening, who aren't from here, that is a big deal because the like ECU's medical school is like a very big deal. Yes. Like, uh, I mean, there's an entire hospital, like, attached to it, and, it, I mean, I guess that's normal, but it, you know what I mean. Yeah, it's everything, and, like, so as we sat, and he asked me what I was planning and this and that, and then he asked me, he goes, well, what are you going to call this clinic? He goes, is it going to be the Tom Quigley Clinic? I says, no, it's going to be the Joy Community Clinic. And he says, you don't want your name on the building? I says, well, I says, I'm going to do a nice little path in the front where I'll sell bricks. People can donate $500. We'll engrave their family's name on a brick and we'll put it in the walkway. I says, I don't need my name on a building. And he says to me, why not? I says, you'd be surprised what you can accomplish if you don't mind who takes the credit. Mm. And at that point he stood up and shook my hand. He goes, I am the head of the medical school at ECU and I'm now your medical director. Shook my hand, thanked me for the sandwich, and walked out the door. Mm. And I was like, still didn't know how big this was until I got an email from one of my board members who works for Health Assist and also Vidant and says, do you know what just happened today? I says, ah, some little guy had a sandwich. And she goes, it's on. And from there, it started growing. And So what exactly happened? So... He he came in and just told you, well, you're starting this clinic. I want to run it for you. Now, I'm on board. Well, he's been running. Or not run it for you, but you know what I mean. He's been actually, he's, he's an older gentleman, mm-hmm. and he could be retired, but he's been working at the free clinic on the other side of the river for decades. And during our conversation, I said to him, I says, It's hard enough for people to get to the kitchen for lunch, and people expect them to go to this clinic. Now, I'm talking about this clinic on the other side of the river, Mm -hmm. 
not knowing that he is the doctor that runs it mm-hmm. and telling him that it was a bad decision to put it where the people weren't. And I says, if you slap a community clinic in the middle of a community, you'll have patients. And he just sat and he listened to everything I said. And he says, can you guarantee patients here? I says, I'm feeding 150 a day for lunch. You'll have patients. Mm -hmm. I says, and then once I found out that he's been running clinics and he's been given his time for this and he was actually one of the writers on the grant when Joy Community Center was first opened. <laughs> yeah, he's been here a while. Yes. And <laughs> he wanted to know where that clinic went. And mm-hmm. I said, the people who were running this, they didn't do the right thing, but they're all gone. And I think once I assured him that those people weren't coming back, he jumped in. Now, from there, we'll have medical students rotate through Joy. They'll have to do it. They usually rotate the hospitals. Joy will now be a stop. Mm. Medical student, nursing student. I'm still a nationally registered paramedic. So I reached out to the fire departments. Medics and EMTs need continuing ed hours. You volunteer service taking vital signs over here at the clinic Mm. on a rotating basis. We can give you clinic hours. So it will still be run by some staff and volunteers. Mm Mm-hmm. And, but it just opens a whole new set of doors for a whole new set of volunteers who could potentially come over and make this place the lighthouse of, B, of West Greenville. So how are you guys doing the uh, – how are you setting up the clinic? The clinic actually <laughs> – Is it going to be like a separate building you guys are putting up or is it going to be within the building you're in? It's actually in the building that we were in. Uh-huh. Uh, the DAV was renting it. And what it is is – When you walk in the front door, instead of the side door to the kitchen, you come in the front door. To the left, there's a waiting room. Mm. On the other side of the waiting room, there's a glass partitioned office where the nurse's station will be. You go into a door to the right, there's a whole room that could be the laboratory vital sign room that has a bathroom. Mm -hmm. And then there are two exam rooms in there. They were fully furnished. They had exam tables and everything. All that stuff was sold. That stuff's all being brought back. There's plumbing in there. There's sinks in the exam rooms. It's like a brand new doctor's office. Full service flooring just came in and put in new floors for me. Carolina paint and painted my walls. I'm replacing all the sailing tiles this week. And it looks like a brand new doctor's office. Wow. And That's that, cool. Yeah, yeah, it's what a waiting room, two exam rooms, a lab room, and a an office for the nurses. And is this... I, I could be wrong here, but this is free, right? It's going to be free. Free to? Free to if you need it. Okay. So anybody can anybody can go there. Anybody can go there. And before this clinic even opened up, we've already started bringing in services. I have West Greenville Health Council. They come twice a month on Wednesdays with diabetes support, cancer support. I have Picasso. They come in. They do HIV testing. We have Trillium. It's a mental health services. They come in. Pathways for Life. So I've been rotating these services in on Wednesday nights. Uh, Daughters of Worth comes in four times a month, uh, and they help the women in the community. Hey there. Hope you enjoyed that clip. You can find more clips like this and full video episodes of the Small Stuff Podcast on our YouTube channel. You can also listen to full episodes of the Small Stuff Podcast in audio form wherever it is you get your podcasts. Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Amazon Music, Audible, all the places. Also, follow us on social media. We're on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook. All the links are in the description. Have a nice day.